Okay, so, so far we have looked at uh, the simple case where um, the covariance matrix of a specific class is uh, proportional to the identity matrix with a, with a coefficient sigma squared, right? Now we're, gonna, we're, we're going to look at a more general case which where, where sigma i or the covariance matrix of a class i is constant, but it can be arbitrary, which means it does not necessarily um, need to be equal or proportional to the identity matrix. So let, let's look at this case uh, in particular. So here what we have, the covariance matrices are all, they're arbitrary, oh, sorry. They are arbitrary, but equal across classes. So this is an important assumption. So in this case, let's just um, uh, recall what we saw earlier. So are these uh, features x1 to xt, are they independent or dependent? So we can see that the covariance is equal to 0.5, so they are dependent, right? So this is our uh, the uh, disc our discriminant function for class i, gi of x, and what we're going to do is simply take these uh, values, right, and plug them in into our into our formula and see what we get. So what will we get? So if you look at this first, we will um, replace sigma i with sigma. So now the sigma does not depend on the i anymore. And here, the sigma i is also constant, so we can just remove the i, right? So it's just a uh, constant. And we have the log of the, the prior for uh, class i, right? So if we remove this term, then we're gonna end up having um, just the first term, right? This one plus the log of the prior. And this is actually the squared Mahalanobis distance, right? So this is how we define the Mahalanobis distance, squared. So this is the norm or the distance between two vectors x and ny in a high dimensional space. And this means we're defining the Mahalanobis distance and it is squared, right? And this is how we write it in terms of um, dot products. So in the case where we have sigma equals to identity, what do we, how, um, what do we find if we look at this? So uh, if sigma is equal to identity and the inverse of the identity is the identity, so we end up having what we call the L2 norm or this is also the Euclidean distance, the typical Euclidean distance that we commonly use, okay? Squared. Great, so uh, now let's look at two different cases. So the case where we have, uh, so this is the case where we have the um, sigma is equal to identity and this is a random sigma. And this is what we saw earlier, so points um, x at equal distance from u, uh, the mean, they lie on a circle, here they, they lie on an ellipse, and the sigma, in the case of the Mahalanobis distance, it stretches circles to ellipses. Right, so let's get back to this one. So we have, uh, we removed all the unnecessary terms, we end up with um, this nice formula, right? And we have two cases, so let's look at the prior, right? So the prior, we might have um, the uh, balanced classes. So in this case, we're gonna end up with having um, a Mahalonibus distance between, between x and uh, mu i, right? Uh, the, the mean, of, um, the mean uh, vector for class i. And in the other case, we will keep this term, right? So if you guys remember previously when we had the uh, covariance matrix proportional to the identity, uh, instead of having just a random uh, uh, covariance matrix, we had the Euclidean distance, the squared of the Euclidean distance. But now in this general case, where it's just the Mahalonibis distance that we're computing from uh, the new point X to the uh, center of the class i, okay? And depending on how close it is to that center, so mu1, uh, mu2, mu3, then we can decide uh, to which class it should belong, 
right? So in this case, uh, let's look at the general case. So in the general case, the, uh, the priors are not equal, which means the classes are imbalanced. So we take our formula and then we plug the different, we expand the dot product, right? So here, let's do it one by one. So um, x transpose times uh, uh, inverse of the covariance times x. So we get the first term. Then the second term, we have minus mu transpose times uh, inverse of the covariance times x, etc. So we expand this whole product, okay? Plus the, uh, of course, plus the uh, ln of the prior, we keep it right there. Now, what do you guys know this? We notice that this is, you know, the Mahalonibus distance of x to mu i is same as mu i to x. So these are the same. So we put them together right here. Okay, so minus mu i t uh, um, sigma inverse of sigma x minus uh, is the same as, uh, this is actually the same as mu i uh, x, okay, so with the, with the transpose right there, so we will get like minus 2, the same quantity, and uh, keep the other terms, right? So what we know this is this term is constant for all classes i, so we will remove it, and then we will keep uh, this term, right, and the second one, and the third one. So if we group all terms around um, uh, x, we find that uh, we have um, this final formula that we can easily plug into the uh, that we can easily plug into this format. So we have um, an omega i uh, transpose. This is a vector, and an omega i zero, which means it's a constant. And uh, we find again the same formula, which is like. Um, a linear classifier in X okay so in this if we take another example let's say let's take the example of three classes and each class has a uh, normal distribution right and these are the means of the features of our two features across all classes and we have a constant covariance right so the covariance is constant across classes so it's the same doesn't vary and but it's it's a random covariance matrix okay it's not equal to the identity in this case or proportional to the identity and we have our priors right so uh these are our priors and you can we can see that our classes are not necessarily um, balanced right and what we need to do we need to find we would want to find the discriminant uh function the line uh, sorry the line that separates the class i from class j. So what we need to do is solve for g i of x equals to g uh, j of x that I explained earlier. And by doing this, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to uh, go over this quickly. So what we have, we just put in the formula for um, uh, g j of x, g i of x, and we regroup terms differently. So we get um, uh, like we regroup terms in, uh, that are multiplied by x, and this is actually, the rest is just a constant or a scalar, okay? And then what we will do, we will substitute for i equals uh, 1 and j equals 1. And by doing so, by doing this substitution process, right, we will get first for i1 and j equals 2, we will get x1 equals 0. And when we substitute for i equals 2 and j equals 3, we, found, we find this uh, linear um, uh, equation okay, that we solve. So this is actually, it tells us the, where exactly to draw our line in um, our space. And then we substitute for i equals 1 and j equals 3. So we get this formula. And then these are actually the equations, right? So this is, you know, I1, G3, I1, so class 1 and 3. And this is this formula right here is defines this line, okay? Because it separates, uh, so points that are located on this line, they satisfy g3 of x equals g1 of x, 
okay and the equation for this line is uh, 5 14 times x1 plus 1.43 x2 equals 2.41 okay so what we know this when we use the Mahalnanobis distance, uh, things change a little bit. So in the case of the Euclidean distance, uh, the means, the, the line that joins the means, like two means, for example, for um, uh, mu3, sorry, okay, let's do this, mu3 and mu1. So now they're not per perpendicular anymore to... Um, to the uh, the discriminant the um, the decision boundary okay so our decision boundaries when we're using the Mahalonobis distance they are not necessarily or generally perpendicular to the lines connecting the means okay now we're gonna look at the general case. So just to wrap up, what would what would we see so far? So uh, to define our uh, uh, Bayesian classifier function, uh, when we have a covariance that is uh, proportional to the identity map, then we get a linear classifier, and uh, when it's uh, constant across classes, then we also get a linear classifier, right? So this is you know using. You, uh, we, we found the Euclidean distance, we found the Mahalonobis distance, right, to the mean, from uh, x to the mean, okay, as a criteria for, as a criterion for um, uh, finding if the observation belongs to that class or not. And now we're going to look at the general case. So this is a general case. So looking at this, we have expanded the, um, the, the dot product, and uh, what we end up with is a general formula that looks like this. Okay, so we have first an xt times a w matrix uh, in x, okay, and something linear in x, and something constant, right, a constant term. So we have what we call, um, the first one is called the quadratic uh, term in X, and this is how we define uh, a quadratic dot uh, product, okay? So a W here acts as what we call generally a kernel, and uh, this is actually a quadratic form. So it's quadratic in X and also linear in X, but uh, what does this mean? It means that if we solve this problem, we're going to see that the lines are not, the decision boundaries are not necessarily linear. So they can be quadratic, nonlinear, which means they uh, would be curved, right? It's a curve that we'll find. It's not a straight line. So the decision boundaries are not linear anymore, but, but quadratic. So we, let's look at this example. So we have, uh, also it's like a, uh, we have three, uh, three, it's a three dimensional space. Um, uh, we have, sorry, it's a, we have three classes in a two dimensional space. So class uh, one, two, three, we have two features and that's why our covariance matrix is two by two. So we have only two features and we have our priors. So you can see that the covariance matrices that we defined are, are different, right? So sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 for each of our three classes. And when we solve this uh, complex system, uh, I'm not going to derive all the equations, but um, uh, what we will end up with is something like that. Okay, So you guys can see that the boundary, the boundary they're, they're, they're not linear anymore, but they're like slightly curved. Okay, 